listen to that. That is just horrendous. Do you think that's normal? You can't be wired right if you're okay with that. You guys put your music on loud in your cars to drown their barks out. You won't be able to drown your conscience out when you're on your deathbed. That's the sound of dogs wanting a life. They want to put their feet on the grass, smell the fresh air. What you do is very wrong here. So I'm here at Camp Beagle today in Huntington. It's a place where I've wanted to come for a long time. Uh, some people call it a concentration camp for animals. Um, I wanted to come and have a chat with some of the people who, who stay here and are highlighting this issue. So come with me and let's have a chat. So how long have you actually been here camped out at Camp Beagle? Uh, me personally, yeah. um, I've been here since the beginning of Ju um, July. So the camp, it was about three weeks in the camp. Right. Um, just heard that there was some dogs inside a puppy farm and had no idea what it was about. And the more I keep learning, mm -hmm. I'm just more and more horrified by what's going on and what's licensed by the Home Office at the moment. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask you if you could tell people exactly what goes on here. Oh, well, MBR Acres, uh, don't be deceived by the name, it really is an industrial complex. Um, you've got single storey sheds that have got no windows. Uh, the facility has capacity for up to 2,000 beagles at a time. At the moment, there's around 1,000. Uh, this was said by the staff manager uh, just a few weeks ago. They breed uh, beagles to go into laboratories and universities around the UK. They've also been shipped over to France and Ireland that we know of. We've recently found out due to a Home Office Freedom of Information request that they're also doing something called bleeding out on site. Um, uh, this is where they, sometimes they do it under terminal anaesthetic, so they put the dog to sleep and they drain the blood and plasma off. Um, sometimes they'll also do something called a cardiac puncture and this involves taking the very last drop of blood out of the heart. Sometimes customers don't want any drugs in the system, so they may not always be under anaesthetic whilst this is done. Um, so they will also stockpile this blood and plasma and freeze it. Um, another thing that they will do is harvest the uh, organs, bone, tissue, even the bile. Um, uh, you know, every single body part of these poor dogs are used. Rather than rehoming them, they will profit from every single you know, body part. It's just absolutely horrendous. Um, and it's unnecessary, which is, you know, we are literally torturing beagles for profit. And can I ask, why beagles? Uh, for the very same reason that they're voted number one pet family dog is the same reason they make great dogs for laboratories. They tend to be quite small, docile, they're very friendly, their tails don't stop wagging, they have a very low bite rate, they live well in packs. Um, so so when, you're, when I'm seeing sort of parts of, of the film that somebody obviously has gone in and managed to get some filming, um, it, I mean, it is horrendous what you see, but what, what, what really broke my heart was that the tail is still wagging. They are still, you can see in their eyes, they are still looking for love, they're looking for that, that human contact, uh, even when these experiments are taking place. And that's what breaks your heart, doesn't it? It's absolutely awful. Yeah. It's very similar to the book, um, Slaughter of the Innocents, that was wrote by Vivi Sector. And he exactly talks about that. This poor dog, he's slowly killing him. Um, he can't even move. He can barely lift his head. Um, and he's still wagging his tail when he comes in to you know, continue the experiment. What I can't understand is the mindset, the mindset of the people that actually do this. I mean, also, I have heard that they leave them alone. Once they've done whatever it is they do in there, they leave them alone for, what, 12 hours at a time, 14? You'd be able to tell me better. 
Well, at the weekend here, uh, this is obviously just the breeding facility, yeah. so they don't do the experiments, or they do the bleeding out. Um, at the weekends, they're left anything up to 19 to 21 and a half hours. You know, it, the weekends is the worst time for these dogs. They're so desperate for some love and affection and you can hear it from the noise. And, you know, it's even more poignant when you can just hear one dog out of a thousand wailing and crying, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you wake up at 3, 4 a.m. and you can hear them. It's just, that's what bolsters us up, you know. There's no way we're leaving here until this place is closed. And it's interesting because on their website, this will this really makes me laugh i don't mean that in a but in a facetious way is that it says we treat the animals with respect and and i just think oh the irony the irony of it and and they're grateful that they're there i mean i can't quite get my head around it's still happening but you're going to stay here and and people join you they join you at weekends they they join you just for a few hours to give support. I mean, I've seen masses and masses of people out here with the police out here. Um, I mean, the police, I have seen uh, tears in the eyes of one policeman when they were played some footage. It's a difficult one because we have tried to educate them quite heavily. Um, it gets to a point where you are talking to, you know, a brick wall. Yeah. Um, yes, there has been tears, but we've also had, you know, police officers I don't care, you know, and when they're coming to escort these awful death vans, how they're supposed to be civil servants and, you know, we're a legal, peaceful protest, you know, should they not be working on building relationships with us? Um, yeah. But their hands are tied. We do understand they are just doing a job, but surely, you know, we could argue the slave trade was legal, what the yeah. Nazi was doing was legal, it was legal to beat your wife, you know, mm. this is totally immoral and the facade that is essential for medical yeah. and veterinary progress you know it isn't holding anymore no. if it was true why are we having to fight so hard for the early day motion 175 which will call for a public and scientific review into animal research you know why are you resisting you know mm -hmm. give it to us willingly if it's so essential if 90 percent of these trials fail with animals we have to ask the question it has to be money involved it always is money that's involved so somebody because it's clearly not for medicine if 90 percent are failing somebody's making an awful lot of money companies are making a hell of a lot of money from this so that is the bottom line isn't it it really is and that's why the edm 175 is so important because whereas you have a parliamentary petition or you have a royal commission that's debated you know it's the government therefore the people who have fi you know financially invested in this industry who are holding that with the edm we get to choose who actually goes to that panel and has the debate and the review right. um so you know for life on earth flow uh, they've got patrons ricky gervais um peter egan and scarlet beagle mm -hmm. you know they've aligned with us as the scientific campaign that's brilliant um, isn't it i mean yeah. that must be giving you a, a bigger platform surely to have these names attached does it absolutely yeah would you like to tell us about the um peter egan is putting in his first petition isn't he i believe is absolutely it next? would yeah. you like to tell us a little bit about that yeah so the one on monday the 17th being heard is to include laboratory animals under the animal welfare act um, at the moment they don't have the same protections you know i could kick my dog and i would be arrested and get up to five years in prison in theory if you do that to an animal in a laboratory there's no protection um, so i believe there was about 112,000 signatures in total it was Due to be heard, um, but David Ames, who was actually my MP, was murdered. So they done a memorial up at the Houses of Parliament instead on the day it was supposed to be heard. So he's really happy that, you know, just a few short months later, it is getting heard. Right. We've got another two petitions. Uh, so as we were saying before, you know, one petition alone isn't going to dismantle the vivisection industry. Yeah. You know, the cocoon of protection that's been weaved round um, has been watertight. But mm. we are the single biggest you know campaign behind anti-vivisection in a long time mm -hmm. there's absolutely obviously been demonstrations going on but you know when you're you're protesting for the freedom of dogs it does hold a bit more weight than if it's mice or rats even monkeys yeah. you know? so the important question is because everybody that's here uh, is giving their time for nothing and some people are based here for a long long time like yourself for people who want to donate to this wonderful campaign, how would they go about it? 
Um, on our website, thecampbeagle.co.uk, there's a PayPal option there. We have also got a GoFundMe up and running, which is specifically for our legal costs. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a flurry of court cases coming up. So far, everyone has been found not guilty or it's been chucked out. We have got more injunction dates to go and we are told even if this injunction remains um, and that is the final injunction, MBR can still take us to court to challenge it and we could be going into a hundred thousand pounds oh um, my goodness you need all the help you can get yeah do you have merchandise yeah we've got various merchandise right. people have just been amazing making their own bits and pieces we've got viva la vegan um you know they've just been absolutely fabulous we've got um happy vegan clothing you know right. laurie's just been amazing we've had so much help because we're you know we're not veterans of protesting yeah. or campaigning we're all really new to this and right. we're juggling a lot of balls whilst also trying to maintain you know the protest camp which sure. is a daily fawn in their side so because, it, because people have to eat here mm. so <laughs> it's been wonderful people yeah. bring down food and resources Do they? sometimes we just randomly have pizzas turn up that someone's ordered <laughs> like it's so lovely so the locals i mean did they know this place existed before you were all here the majority no no they they're didn't horrified even know. So do they come down and help with drinks and things like that? Oh, or? they're wonderful. Yeah. We wouldn't be here without the local support. We really wouldn't. You know, thank you so much. You all know who you are. You do a fantastic job. And, you know, likewise, you know, we just, there's many cogs that are helping this campaign. Sure, yeah. Well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll put the links below. So if you do want to donate to this wonderful campaign, um, we'll put all the links if you want to buy any of the merchandise as well, um, because it's so important that we keep this going until, it ends really yeah, absolutely they're here for the duration i mean i think it's incredible what you do because yeah, we, we we don't really value this sort of work we value people that go on uh, the only way is essex we'll value <laughs> you going on to a, a competition the x factor but we don't value people who really draw attention really to things that are just morally morally incorrect so um mm. i really thank you for your time and i'm just going to have a little look around i know we can't go everywhere because of the injunction we have to <laughs> yeah. cross the road and go on the other side but we are going to have a look uh, as much as we can so thank you for your time thank you so much Thanks. really thank you